Call the meeting to order. Please rise for the pledge. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good time. Yes, that door is locked. Uh, we were just told that Mr. Malloy would have been on time except the outside door is locked. <laughs> so I don't know if we might want to... too close anyway, but... We uh, have a scout who may be uh, joining us in progress, so maybe we should get the door open. Thank you. Clerk will note man, that uh, uh, all council are present with the exception of uh, Betty Ann Henderson, who is excused tonight. Ceremonies... Uh, Announcements, appointments, presentations. We do have an Eagle Scout presentation, but I was just informed that he had the time uh, mistaken, so he may or may not be here. If he doesn't show up tonight, we will honor him in two weeks. No, they're waiting for him. They're waiting for him. Waiting for him, yeah. Okay. Sorry and if he, if he does show up, uh, we will uh, interrupt our meeting and make a presentation to him. Uh, the announcements. Urban Renewal Agency workshop with City Council is tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. in the City Hall basement conference room. Dedication of the Clay Larkin Conference Room uh, at the Garden Plaza. It's a ceremony and reception honoring former Mayor Clay Larkin, Tuesday, May 20th at 4 p.m. at the Garden Plaza. The online budget survey is still open. Just 10 questions and it only takes about 10 minutes. We want to get input from residents and businesses about budget priorities during the budget process. There's a link on the city's homepage, www.postfallsidaho.org. The park and recreation community garden plots are now available. There are a limited number of spaces available. The community garden is located just west of the Post Falls Senior Center. Sign up deadline is June 13th. Forms are on the city website or the park and rec office. In primary election, early voting is available through Friday, May 16th at the County Elections Office, 1808 North 3rd Street in Coeur d'Alene from 8 until 5 p.m. Do we have a presentation, uh, Senior Center Meals on Wheels presentation, Allison? Good evening, Honorable Mayor Jacobson and Council Members. I am Allison MacArthur, Executive Director of the Post Falls Senior Center, and tonight I'm here to give you a little update and a thank you. A little bit of history for those out there that may not know, the Post Falls Senior Center has been in um, operation since 1978. We serve three days worth of hot meals to our seniors in the area, along with delivery to those homebound. Many do not know that the homebound seniors get seven days worth of meals. Um, we have different events that go on at the senior center, exercise classes, educational classes, and we even rent out our facility for weddings, uh, birthday parties, and more. Um, just to let everybody know, we do have a web page. Um, it was created back in 2011. We keep it um, updated. There's a few times it doesn't get updated, but it's at www.postfallsseniorcenter.org. Back in March, and every year in March, the National Meals on Wheels Association um, conducts a March for Meals campaign. In the past, it's been called the Mayor's March for Meals, and it was always asking that your community mayor come out, go out on delivery, see about home deliveries and Meals on Wheels. But this year, we were asked to make it larger and bigger, and so we invited all elected officials and community business leaders to help spread the word about Meals on Wheels. So during the week of March 17th through March 22nd, the Post Falls Senior Center, along with our community um, champions, delivered Meals on Wheels to our clients. In Post Falls, we had over 35 volunteers that partnered and helped prepare, deliver, and fundraise during that week. And nationwide, there was over 2,560 members and volunteers that took place. In the state of Idaho, we are the only one in the north that did this program, and the only other three were Twin Falls, Blackfoot, and Haley down in southern Idaho. So March Fair Meals, on, um, at the end of the week on March 22nd, we had our annual fundraiser, Gold Rush 2014. 
During this event, we had dinner, dancing, silent auction, and a video about the Meals on Wheels, so we did a little paddle raiser to help sponsor Meals on Wheels. Many of those clients are unable to make our suggested donation of $5, and so um, we always are seeking donation and help to um, keep the program going. We raised well over $37,000 that night, so we appreciate everybody in the community and everybody that came out and helped. We'd like to thank the following participants that helped out in the event, and we have certificates, and I'm going to wait at the end and pass them out to you, but we would like to thank Mayor Ron Jacobson, Councillor Betty Ann Henderson, Councillor Carrie Thorson, Councillor Joe Malloy, and then we also had Fire Chief Warren Merritt and County Commissioner Dan Green come and participate that uh, couple different days through the week, and they helped package the meals, saw how the process is, put them in the bags, deliver them, and then see how we um, collect and um, gather all our information. So we want to say thank you. <clears throat> Here are some pictures. Thought we'd highlight what happened there that week. Um, in the middle there is the um, team sitting down. They got to see the video, get a little bit of history about Meals on Wheels. You can see Councillor Malloy and Councillor Thoris in there <laughs> helping prepare the meals. There is Councillor um, Betty Ann Henderson and then the three, um, Mayor Jacobson, um, Carrie Thorson, and Joe Malloy. And then um, in the middle there is Fire Chief Merritt as well. So we've got some pictures and we will be able to pass those on to you here in the next week or so. But now on to some great news that we want to notify you of. Um, the Post Falls Senior Center would like to announce that we have been given in the last three months some very nice grants and tonight we'd like you to know about them. Kootenai Electric Roundup, um, their Operation Roundup where people round up their electric bills. We uh, received $2,500 in February. That money went to purchase two electric heated bags that go into the cars that can be plugged into the chargers to keep the meals warm so that they're hot when we deliver them to the um, client's homes. And those bags run us about $450 each, so that was a nice little gift to have. And then we bought a year's worth of supplies of our trays that are you know, um, able to be microwaved and oven ready for the meals. So we prepare our meals, put them in a safe container. So that helped that. Um, this past week, Union Pacific granted us $7,000 in a grant. 2,000 of it will be going towards um, our garden project. I don't know if you guys are aware, we do have a very nice garden behind the Thrift Center. We built it with a grant that we received two years ago from United Way and from the um, Juvenile Diversion Program. We take the seniors and the youth and we work together on building a, a garden and producing and harvesting fruit and vegetables for our seniors. So 2,000 will go to that and 5,000 towards our meals. And then just this past week, and we will be doing a photo presentation next week, the Walmart State Foundation gave us $35,000. So that will be going towards Meals on Wheels, our senior nutrition program and everything. And then um, exciting news, this was done before we got the final word, but we are now officially with Second Harvest Food Bank. We will now have a little food bank area at the Senior Center for seniors to come in and pick up food. And then we will also be able to pick up food to help with our um, pr preparation for other meals and snacks and everything to ensure the senior does not go hungry. So with that being said, I'd like to just say thank you to everyone here and to the community. The Senior Center is in great shape now. Um, we want people to come see it. Um, it has been changed. I will tell you two weeks ago, Betty Dougal stopped by. She lives in Lewiston, um, and she was one of the founding, her husband and her were one of the founding fathers of the Senior Center, and she was in tears to see it. And it, she gave me a great big hug and said that she was very happy it was still here and it looked really good. So we want to say thank you for all your support in the community, and I will stand for questions or comments. Questions or comments, Allison? I've got a question. What's happening in your life on the 17th? Um, the next day on the 18th, I get to graduate from Whitworth University with my bachelor's degree in organizational management honey. and political science. So, good job. Man. Thank you. I just want to say that you do such a wonderful job there, Allison, and people all over the community have said that. So, very good job. Thank you. It's been, it was a tough road to go through, four years of crisis after crisis, but I have to say it's such a better, positive thing that we're moving ahead. and. The road is only brighter and the future is even bigger and brighter. So Good we're very happy. So thank you. Well, I'd just like to make a comment. I know everybody here has assisted with the senior center, but one name, and I know Mr. Hissong has helped, has been a big part of that, and his name wasn't up there, but I appreciate everything you've done to help, 
help that place. He was busy that week. He was out of town. So we're hoping that next year all of you guys will be present next year. Um, just plan out the third week of March. It's always the third week of March every year is our Champions Week. Um, the earlier I get um, your name and co confirmation that you want to do it, we can put it on the website for next year. And uh, our gold rush will end that week again next year, the same thing. So we're excited about it. Thank you. Thank you for all you Thanks, do. Thanks, Joe. Just for a comment for those that aren't as familiar with the program, one thing I learned that I hadn't considered before going around is that, you know, often the Meals on Wheels volunteers are the only contact that some of these people have. And uh, so, one, it's a very spiritually uplifting thing, and two, it's, uh, it's a very good welfare check. Um, often the volunteer is the, the first responder, if you will, to a health problem or if somebody has slipped and fallen, and it's uh, tremendously beneficial. So if somebody's looking to get involved in, in something that's really good for the community, please talk to Allison. Thank you. We appreciate that. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Thank you very much. I'm going to pass out certificates. Thank you. Thank you. You bet. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thanks, Allison. Merrick came in too. Uh, so yes, Fire Chief Merrick came in while you were presenting what also. Is yeah, oh. snuck in behind you. There he is. Fire Chief Merrick. Thanks, Chief. Thank are there any amendments to the agenda? There are none tonight. Any declarations of conflict? Your Eagle Scout showed up. No, I don't think he did. We don't have our Eagle Scout yet, correct? The, the young gentleman back there were going to give me the thumbs up, and they were going oh. like this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. Um, any declarations of conflict? Shelly, would you read the consent calendar, please? Item A is minutes from the April 15th, 2014 meeting. Item B is payables April 8th through April 28th, 2014. Item C is the fiscal year 2015 budget hearing, which is scheduled for August 19th, 2014. Item D is police department disposal or surplus of property. Item E is utility bad debt write-off. Item F is finance division contract with FCS group to provide a full cost and indirect cost allocation plan. Item G is award of the 2014 asphalt chip seal bid. Item H is consultant services agreement with JUB engineering for the WRF outfall pipeline replacement. And item I is assistant prosecutor's vehicle replacement and purchase. Thank you. Any questions? Alan, you had a couple. I did. Could somebody explain a little bit more on item F? I know I'm the new guy, so I'm playing that card tonight. I really don't know. I think I got a pretty good idea what it is, but I was hoping that maybe Jason could explain a little bit <coughs> further. Yeah, the, what FCS group is going to help me with is they're going to um, help uh, determine what our in internal costs are for, for direct direct charges that I can bill and re get reimbursement from for the utilities. There's um, certain um, general fund functions such as, like in my department, um, payroll uh, does work for, for all the utilities, uh, water and sewer, but I need to have a, um, an approved plan in order to recover those costs back from them. So that's one piece of it will be the, the, the direct cost allocation. And then the other part portion is a um, indirect cost plan. There's a lot of federal grants that will allow us to add a um, indirect cost, which will be um, uh, city administrator, um, um, if our legal costs, our insurance costs to, in, um, to, to grants, but it has to be through an approved plan, through, um, through somebody that, that knows how to um, um, uh, navigate those costs. And then also part of the agreement is they'll show me how to um, come up with the direct costs and indirect costs, and then in future years, give me the spreadsheet so that we can do it internally. So does this help you in setting fees then for garbage or water? Or no, it's just um, what the what the direct cost will be is <clears throat> to for the general fund to recover some costs from the utility funds. Oh, okay. I have to have some kind of um, legitimate cost structure in order to, to do that. When the auditors come in and they see that I've uh, charged utility funds, they want to make sure that my calculations are are um, are correct. It will also help us though when like Russell sets his fees because he will have the direct cost and indirect cost for each of his employees. So when he calculates those fees, he will use them to calculate the fees downstairs also. So okay. it's not, that's not the specific purpose for it, but it is a benefit of it. Great, makes a lot more sense. Thank you. Okay, good. Any other questions? Add one more. Okay. okay. Not for Jason, I don't think. It's item I, the prosecutor's vehicle replacement. Is this, I don't know who, uh, probably Terry or I could okay. answer it. Is this be, I understand the getting rid of the old car because it's falling apart, but is this something, is this a part of the benefits for this particular employee to have a car 
provided for them or? They've had a car provided for them for a number of years. And basically it's just for city businesses to run from city hall to the courthouse to try a case, plead cases, and then back to city hall. They don't use it to go back and forth to home or anything. And for those two positions, the prosecutor and assistant prosecutor, we used to allow them to bill mileage, and the costs were exorbitant as compared to supplying them with a vehicle. That's was going to be my next question. Okay, great. Thank you. Skip. Do we have two vehicles, one for each of them? Yes. Currently, um, the prosecutor's vehicle is still in running condition at such a time that it isn't, then we would replace it also. Okay. While you're up there, Terry. <laughs> The uh, award of the asphalt chip seal bid? Yes. We had some issues last year, correct? I mean, there was we did. a couple locations. Are we going with the same vendor? Are we changing processes? Yeah. Where are we on that? A little bit of both. We uh, have a different supplier who was the low bid this year, so it won't be the same company that did last year. And also, before we put out the documents for bid, we sent them to Strata over in Spokane had them go through our contract documents, tighten up the specifications, and they are also going to come out and inspect the rock and inspect the oil before it goes down so that we make sure that we're getting what we're paying for. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Without an entertaining motion. Move to approve the consent calendar as stated. Second. Motion seconds. Further questions? Clerk, please take the roll. Wilhelm? Aye. Itzong? Aye. Malloy? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Thorson? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Next item is public hearings, and we have none. And actually, thank you, Joe, I am going to uh, deviate, and our Eagle Scout uh, has arrived, and I appreciate you taking the time to, I know you had it wrong on the calendar, and thank you for taking the time to come in. Would you please come forward? <laughs> this is Blake Livingston, and Blake has completed all the requirements for his Eagle Scout. And uh, we have a certificate of recognition for you, number one, which I will give you. And the second thing we give our Eagle Scouts is a buck knife, and I always love to quote. Mayor Larkin, it's very sharp. Please do not open it here. And another thing the Mayor Larkin always said is, uh, what you've accomplished is a tremendous uh, feat. And please always feel free to use that in any applications, resumes, et cetera, because people will look favorably upon that. So on behalf of the City Council, myself, and all of us at the City, we want to congratulate you for your uh, attaining the rank of Eagle Scout. Thanks again, Blake. Uh, public hearings, we had none. Unfinished business, we have none. Citizen issues. This section of the agenda is reserved for citizens wishing to address the council regarding city-related issues that are not on the agenda. We would allow you five minutes to speak and ask you to give your name for the record. Seeing none, we'll go to new business, which we have none. Ordinances and resolutions. We have two resolutions. The first resolution is Bicycle and Pedestrian Prioritization Plan 2011. Move to approve the Bicycle and Pedestrian prior Prioritization Plan 2011. Second. Motion is second. Further questions? Aye. Clerk, please take the roll. Thorson? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Malloy? Aye. Hissong? Aye. Wilhelm? Aye. Thank you. Motion passes. The second resolution is a sole source purchase with data 911 for in car computers for patrol vehicles. Move to approve the resolution sole source purchase with data 911 for in car com computers for patrol vehicles. Second. Motion second for the questions. Clerk, please take the roll. Hisson? Aye. Malloy? Aye. Wilhelm? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Thorson? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Next item is administrative staff reports. The first is Strategic Plan Annual Accomplishment Report 2013, Hillary Anderson. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Get this 
that up. All right, this evening I am presenting the Annual Accomplishments Report 2013 for the Strategic Plan. We have successfully completed the first year of implementing the plan, and so wanted to come back to you and also to report to the community what we've accomplished during that year. The strategic plan it has the five goals. There are overarching goals that direct us over the five-year time frame of the strategic plan. And so those kind of help show us where we want to go and what those top priorities were for the community. The annual accomplishments report tracks the accomplishments by each of the, the five goals as listed on the screen. And then there were objectives with each of the goals that help create more direction for how we're going to achieve the goals. And so under the economic and business vitality goal, the objectives that were relevant for 2013 were to increase economic development efforts and provide support for current and future businesses. So the accomplishments under this goal were first that economic development was added to planning division responsibilities last year. Staff worked together with the planning and media staff to create economic development marketing materials and that included a variety of hard copy and some flash drive business cards and some other materials that were electronic that we could promote post falls and in the business climate here. And here's kind of an example of what some of those look like. We conducted a business survey in partnership with the chamber. We didn't get a lot of response because it was just hard copy and some email. So we're actually going to revamp that um, within the next few months and do Survey Monkey and try and get a lot more responses. We also started district planning efforts last year. We hosted the open house and, and asked the community to tell us if they supported district planning efforts. And then we did receive direction from yourselves and the Commission, Planning and Zoning Commission, to proceed with district planning for the two top priority potential districts along Spokane Street. We also helped organize a community consultation with HUD and our other partners, and that occurred last year. The economic development webpage was revised to include more up-to-date and relevant information. And the city also supported legislative efforts related to economic development last year. We also received a Planning Excellence Award for the best practice for the strategic plan in October. There's an image of that. Under the well-planned and livable community objectives, we had plan for future transportation, infrastructure, land use, and technology needs to enhance the livability of Post Falls, to improve infrastructure connect and connectivity, ensure access to public transportation, and man maintain and expand city facilities. So here are our accomplishments under that. The 15th, 16th Street realignment project was completed. Work began on the traffic signal just by City Hall here at Spokane Street and 4th Avenue. Design work commenced on the Spencer Street extension project. And staff also continued to support the Urban Renewal Agency on the two projects listed here, Greens Ferry Overpass and Spokane Street improvement projects. The design and right-of-way work continued on the Celtis Mullen Congestion Mitigation Plan. Engineering staff worked on the scope of work for the transportation master plan update, which will start this year. The city received a grant from ITD through the Community Choices Program for $500,000 for the Highway 41 trail. And a transit stop was relocated along Spokane Street in coordination with CityLink to provide better ac accessibility. Some of the other ones under the same goal were that Wells 1 and 2 were taken out of service last year well, 2A was completed. It's in service and replaces those other two wells. The generator at the Highlands was upgraded. The water reclamation facility master plan was completed, as was the water reclamation collection system master plan. The design contract was signed for water reclamation plant in Equalization Basin. There were discussions with Rathdrum on acquiring some of their <coughs> land application sites. GIS mapping was completed for the lift stations. And an interactive GIS traffic count map was completed. I'll show you an image of that on the next slide. So this is on the city's public web page. So you can go to the, the map gallery, and you can actually go in and click on the dots on the streets that you want. You can zoom in, and then it actually will show you what the traffic counts are. So that's kind of a cool interactive tool. The five-year maintenance plan for the streets department was completed last year. And the paving and ceiling maintenance projects were completed, which was approximately 11 miles of streets. 
The Centennial Trail was seal coated and striped from state line to east of Coeur d'Alene. Survey work began on the six acre site owned by the city that's just south of the cemetery. Staff worked on preparing a nodes and corridor study as part of the district planning efforts and that was in conjunction with engineering staff. A web-based tool using SharePoint was developed to help the staff track implementation of the strategic plan and that's gonna help us do more current reporting on the web page as well so that'll be unveiled shortly. The projects to city facilities were completed in compliance with the American Disabilities Act. So under the quality educational, recreational, and lifestyle opportunities objective, these were the ones listed here. There's five of those related to education, maintaining and expanding the parks and recreation facilities, promoting high quality recreation programs, enhancing partnerships, and expanding the events in the city related to recreation and races. So staff represented the city on the North Idaho College Workforce Training Center's Advisory Board. Staff attended the education tour that was hosted at the high school and K-Tech just to learn more about what are the training opportunities and how that's relevant for business opportunities in the city. Staff also worked with partners to develop the Post Falls on the Go Heart Healthy Living Guide prescription pad and website which were launched last summer. The trails at Camilan Park were mapped and repaired they installed the trail markers along the loop trail and then they did some improvements to control the erosion on some of the trails. And then the triathlon was revamped. So here is an image of the cover of the Post Falls on the Go Heart Healthy Living Guide. If you haven't seen that before, they're all around the city. It's also online. So this is just kind of one of the screenshots of the website. You can also access the guide and download <coughs> as well. And then, as I mentioned, there's a prescription pad that we distributed to medical community and healthcare professionals. And here's an image of the GIS map. It's also on the city's website that you can zoom in on the trails and the maps, or the parks in the city. That's a really great tool. Under sense of community goal, these are the two objectives. So expand and update external communications and information and support community events. The accomplishments were to update the event signage for the Post Falls Festival. And media staff began uh, kind of overhauling the website. So they did a page by page update just to make it more user friendly and to make it quicker to access some of the pages and it kind of promoted some of the more popular pages so it was easier to find those and then added more images and other details. And the last goal and the, the two objectives of, under that are safe community to maintain a safe and secure community and improve accessibility. So the accomplishments were that we received safety grants for some traffic signal improvements at very lo various locations in the city. Police department worked with community development staff to identify future updates to their public safety capital improvement plan. The neighborhood watch program was revitalized. They have more visible block watch signs that are being purchased and displayed in the neighborhoods and I believe I'm not sure how many months ago, but you had the presentation from the police department from Chief Hogue. They conducted block watch program meetings last year to establish and train some block watch captains in more areas of the city. And they published a quarterly newsletter about the current issues facing the city and how to protect oneself against tr crime trends. They also developed a 100 member working group to share information developed during retail crime theft cases and they're working with big box stores and other retailers and that information has really helped with some of the, the crime reduction. They completed an evaluation of a west side substation and did determine that that would be something that would be useful in the future. There is a need for that and they'd like to partner with another entity. Police department also attended homeowners association meetings to show their commitment to partner with the community. They assisted homeowners associations with code enforcement issues and strategies for improving neighborhoods and they met with businesses and agencies to share information and provide active shooter training and so that's something they've been really involved in and has also been useful to the community. Ongoing efforts under each of the goals and so this is just kind of a summary of all of them. There's been ongoing training for staff under the American Disabilities Act, implementing the Parks and Recreation Master Plan, identifying opportunities in various parts of the city where deficiencies are for parks, 
maximizing opportunities to do cross-marketing with other organizations to help save costs and kind of promote ourselves further without having to duplicate efforts. Enhancing open space partnerships with Avista, partnering with others to identify possible race and recreational events, and continuing to offer planning and maintenance support for community events as included in the budget. Reaching out to the residents and businesses to help combat crime and keep citizens safe. And lastly, to continue looking for businesses to partner on connecting security cameras to the police department to help monitor those businesses and to help solve crimes. So, so to find out more, all of this is on the city's website. And so here's a, the website URL for the strategic plan. This is the strategic plan webpage, and I circled the annual report. So you can click on that and actually see the report. It's four pages, and it has a little more detail than those bullet points. You can also access the strategic plan from, you can go to the home page and you can click on the economic development, so the top tab up there, and then you can click on the We Value Post Falls logo and that'll take you straight to the, the web page. So that's all. Happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you, Are there any questions? Yeah. I'd like to thank you because in the uh, talks I've been giving, I tell people that we're in the process of completing the summary of the first year of that plan and that it would be available on the website and you've just made sure I wasn't a liar. So thank right. you very You're much. You're welcome. It's been up that. there for I think at least a week and a half. I told him it yeah. was coming. So Good. Thank, thank Good you very job, much. Good job. Yeah, Great job. Thanks. Excellent. Next item is cancellation of the June 17th City Council meeting. Shelley. Yes, um, AIC has their conference that week in Boise. So most of the members who will be attending from staff and legal, I think, will also be attending, won't you? I think so. Okay. We'll not be here Tuesday night, June 17th. I believe also you may be out of town, Mr. Mayor. So we were talking about canceling that meeting. We've done that in the past. If there's um, any comments or if council would like to make a motion or good ask any questions. <laughs> Skip said we'd have a good time without you, but I won't be there either, so I guess I take that. You weren't supposed to repeat Darn it. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. So moved. We need a motion to do it then, right? Yes. Thank you very much. Joe, motion? Yeah. Move. Second. 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 Motion second. Any questions? Clerk, please take the roll. Wilhelm? Aye. Hassan? Aye. Malloy? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Thorson? Aye. Thank you very much. Budget workshop. And the next item would be to move the workshop from the June 17th <coughs> meeting to the June 3rd meeting. And Jason's been trying to find a date to have a budget workshop, so we thought maybe that would be a good date that everyone could attend 5 o'clock before a council meeting for the Is budget workshop. I think it's a good idea. Yeah. It puts a time frame. It has to end at yeah. 6. Okay, five, I do two. think that the hour before would be enough time, yeah. And uh, everybody, was, everybody was pretty flexible about what time they were wanting, so I'd never really had anything um, solid, like a, a date proposed. We had a lot of saying, uh, whatever date you decide, whatever date you decide. And then Shelly and I were talking and said, why don't we just do it on a, uh, the June workshop for council. That'd be the budget workshop. And it's right before council meeting, It'll be Tuesday. Everybody will be here. So will that be downstairs? It. It'll be downstairs, yes. Question, further question? Take like an hour of PTO even. <laughs> Thank you very much. So we don't need a motion on that. We just will have the workshop, correct? Yeah, no motion, just discussion. Right. Thanks, Jason. Thank you. Next time, council comments. Do you have any comments? This, <clears throat> excuse me, this Sunday for the 30-something year in a row, the uh, Post Falls Lions will be having a Mother's Day breakfast at the uh, Senior Center, and we will be serving from 7 till 11 uh, all mothers are uh, entered in free, and everybody else, I believe, it's five dollars. So uh, come have a great breakfast, bring the whole family, and uh, the food's great, and get some uh, good service. I hope you all show up. Thanks, Kim. Okay. And for those mothers that get up early and go at seven o'clock to the senior center with the lions, they can hit brunch at the American Legion because they're doing free breakfast also for mothers from 8 to 11. So I figure if you have lunch at the Senior Center or breakfast at 7. Have coffee at one and then go eat at the other one. Yeah. That would work. Yeah, yeah I, I'm thinking that, that works. Um, so at, the, at American Legion Post 143, it's 8 to 11, their regular Sunday 
breakfast, but mothers are going to be treated. And then also, because I don't think we have a council meeting before this, I think our next council meeting is the 20th. Sunday, May 18th, is the empty bowls at the Jack, Jacqueline Arts and Culture Center. That this is not the first time, it's the second, third, fourth, we're going to say third, Hillary's going to say third time. This is a wonderful program, the Distinguished Young Women of Post Falls. They sponsor this program, but all proceeds from the event benefit the Post Falls Food Bank. And these are bowls, actual bowls, handcrafted bowls. These hands are going to craft one, and it'll either be a collector's item or the last bowl chosen. <laughs> but they're all but maybe this one. Um, will be beautiful works of art. So you pay for the bowl, $15, you get a bowl and uh, all the soup you can eat. So that is Sunday, May 18th from 11 to 2 at Jacqueline Arts and Culture Center. Thank you, Kerry. Anything else? Council comments, I had the opportunity to speak today, which was somewhat interesting. I was speaking at an H2O Water Quality Summit in Spokane uh, with the mayor from Aurora, Illinois, population 200,000, the mayor David Condon, Spokane, population 210,000, and yours truly, population 30,000. And uh, it was fun to be able to present uh, our perspective on EPA requirements, costs associated, et cetera. And one of the things that stood out is Mayor Condon made the comment that City of Spokane is going to spend $310 million revamping their system and adhering to all the requirements, et cetera. He said that's the largest infrastructure project the City of Spokane has ever begun. And when I compared their cost per citizen to our cost per citizen, we were 58% higher. And just shows you, even though we're a smaller community, we still have to adhere to the same requirements as mandated by EPA. So. It was, uh, it was good information. I appreciate Terry and Terry Warner and Paul Claff for providing me the information so I could at least pretend that I knew what I was talking about. So thank you very much. Uh, with that, we need an executive session tonight. Yes. How long? 20 minutes. Move to enter into executive session pursuant to Idaho Code 67-23451C to conduct deliberations concerning labor negotiations or to acquire an interest in real property which is not owned by a public agency, and furthermore, that the action, no action will be taken during the session, and the session will last no longer than 20 minutes. Second. Motion second. For the questions. Please take the roll. Wolf? Aye. Malloy? Aye. Corson? Aye. Wilhelm? Aye. Hisson? Aye. Thank you. Motion passes. Uh, thank you all for joining us, and we're going to adjourn to executive session.
Or Ron hit the gavel and they thought it was uh -oh, over. the red light's on. Call the meeting back to order. Are there any motions to come forth? Adjourn. Adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Meeting adjourned. And just so you know, okay. I have.